As you can see, I got my farm gear on, ready to pluck chickens and pluck chick. What? This is the closest farming shirt I could get. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello, I'm Random Bystander here, and the Nintendo Direct happened about a week ago, and uh, lots of people are happy with it, and some are not. A lot of people are not, actually. People seem really angry and disappointed with the release. A lot of games were announced, don't get me wrong. We got Breath of the Wild 2, Pikmin 4, lots of good stuff. Lots of things that I myself am really looking forward to. But a lot of people thought that farming game simulators and RPGs dominated the entire Direct. Too many farm games, the internet cried. Where's the Zelda remakes? Where's F-Zero? Where's Mother 3? Okay, that last one's probably just me. Now, I got to thinking, are there too many farm games on the Switch? Is the console being oversaturated by them to the point where it makes everybody sick of them? Or are people just complaining? Well, these are my random thoughts. First off, what defines a farm sim game? Well, it's a subgenre of a life simulation game where you, well, raise a farm. You raise crops, take care of animals like cows and chickens, and get to know other villagers around your farm, sometimes even marry them and have them become your spouse. You often start from nothing, and your farm can grow into something huge. From my experience, the right game can make these daily tasks seem extremely satisfying, and I have lost hours upon hours with these type of games. There's no doubt that farms and life sims in general are a major genre for gaming nowadays, especially on the Nintendo Switch. You could play these type of games on the go and just get into it. Take it with you wherever you go. And that is magical to a lot of people. And I have lost hours upon hours upon hours playing these type of games. The main one people think of is Harvest Moon, now known as Story of Seasons due to licensing issues I'm not gonna go into with this video. While Story of Seasons may have been the one who planted the seed of this genre, Stardew Valley was the big game that watered that seed and gave it some fertilizer so that it could grow into the gaming giant that it is today. It improved gameplay, took the formula of growing crops and meeting villagers by cranking everything up to 11. The characters were interesting, a crafting system was added, you could go in dungeons and fight monsters. So many things big and small that were added to make this the ideal farming simulator. And it's still one of the best selling over 20 million copies as of this May. And the game came out in 2016. And if there's one thing I learned about the gaming industry, if something is successful, people are gonna copy it. A lot. Remember when Call of Duty was a success and suddenly there were shooters around every corner? How about how open world games became a staple after the success of Breath of the Wild? How every game had to have a crafting system after a certain crafting game with mines was created? Hmm? One could argue that the success of Stardew Valley brought more farming games to the public, whether it be indie developers who wanted to put their spin on the subgenre, or publishers like Square Enix who wanted a piece of that successful pie. Farming games were a plenty. Just to name a few, My Time at Portia, Littlewood, Itaria Fables, Pioneers of Olive Town, Farm Together, even games like Graveyard Keeper, Disney Dreamlight Valley, and even Animal Crossing have some sort of farming incorporated into their games. Although Animal Crossing is the most bare bones of them all. Over the years, the amount of games about raising crops has certainly grown. No pun intended. And you can easily find one on the eShop. Some good, some bad. And while I really enjoy the genre, and there's so many of you who can't get enough of them, I can understand why people can feel burned out on them if that's all they play and that's all they see. Which brings us back to the Direct. There were five farm games mentioned. Six if you count the teaser for uh, Rune Factory, the new one that's coming out. Some of these, like Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life, and the Rune Factory 3 remake, I'm really looking forward to. While those like Fate Farm I have little to no interest in, and Harvestella I honestly want to try the demo and see. Let me know if you want me to play that, by the way. But that's only a few games, with over 30 more showcased in the 40 minute presentation. For the sake of the Direct, I think it's less about too many farm games, and more about a lack of variety and something for everyone, combined with people having high expectations due to false leaks and rumors. But that's a story for another video. But the question is, are there too many farming games on Switch? For that I say, it all depends on the gamer who plays them. 
I know so many gamers who will never get tired of playing on the farm, milking cows and wooing multiple spouses. I also know other players who never want to grow crops in the virtual world as long as they live. Players like what they like, and while it can feel like one genre can be dominating, there are hundreds of games on the Switch. And just because the one you want doesn't come out, doesn't mean you don't have a variety of options of different games and genres. For those who love farming sims and simulation games, you had a lot to feast on in this Direct. And if you aren't a fan of that, it's good to know that you still won't go hungry, as there are a bunch of stuff to snack on in the Switch's library, and future announcements too. And even fans of farm simulators don't like every farm sim, they like good games. Stardew is a fantastic game, as with many other simulation games. In the end, it's not about the genre, it's what you do with it. If you want my personal opinion, I can see why people are getting burned out by the farm sim games. I love them to death, but even I'm starting to notice that there is quite a few of them. Some days, I love Stardew Valley and play it non-stop. In others, I put the game down for months upon months of time. And then it kind of repeats itself. I kind of do that with a lot of games, including Skyrim, Sims, and even Animal Crossing and others. And I know a lot of you do too, and that's okay. I might be rambling at this point, but hey, these are my random thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and heck, maybe even like and subscribe if you enjoy the video too. Now, excuse me, I've got some crops to plant. Virtually in a game, I can't do that in real life. That stuff's hard.